Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter Rise. And in this one, I want to talk in greater detail about the new Monster Blight. So if you guys caught our Endemic Life video the other day, then we took a look at all the Endemic Life located around the uh, Shrine Ruins map and kind of what they do. And I touched on the special beetles that allow you to apply elemental blights to the monsters, basically giving them a taste of their own medicine. The way they always used to blight us, we can now turn that on them. And I said in that video that we wanted to go into greater detail and just kind of talk a bit more about what those allow you to do. So that is the purpose of this video. So if you guys do enjoy it, then a like would be super appreciated. And let me know what you guys think of these new blights. Do you think they're gonna extend it even further? Maybe link them into like armor skills and make it so that you could potentially, I don't know, use an elemental weapon paired with the right skill to maybe apply it just with a weapon alone. That could be pretty cool. But anyway, that to one side, let's talk about the Blight. So, according to the in-game Hunter notes, the use of endemic life, or sometimes attacks between monsters, can have elemental properties. These actions can result in one of several abnormal statuses, and so far we know of fire, water, thunder, and ice Blight. There could of course be more, but as of the demo, these are the only ones we have to go on. Each of these elemental blights can be applied with an endemic life found on the map. More specifically, they are the Hunter Helpers. They're endemic life forms that can be used as items once captured, and when you find and capture one, they'll be stored in the Helper Cage and used via the item bar. You can store up to five at once, and for more information on the specific locations of those, you can check out the video we did the other day. But let's talk about these blights. So the very first one, Water Blight. The in-game description for this says a monster's hide will become softer when it's afflicted with Water Blight. This effect becomes more pronounced the harder the body part is, making it a prime opportunity to go after sections that are otherwise difficult to damage. Now, we've done multiple tests with this, with several weapons hitting the same spots on different monsters to see how this blight works and have found some interesting results. Firstly, when it comes to testing non-armored areas, such as Mizutsune's head, this shows a damage number of 13 with the Light Boga normal ammo 2, and 15 after applying the Water Blight debuff. This shows a small increase to damage on a non-armored part. We further tested this on Azarus's back with the Long Sword and the Great Sword. We saw a 2 damage difference with the Great Sword from 47 to 49 same as the light bow gun, but only a 1 damage difference on the long sword, 25 to 26. Keep in mind different weapons have different motion values, so this likely plays into this factor. So while not the same, it does seem the bonus is fairly consistent across the weapons, and is only a very small extra amount of damage to the non-armoured parts of a monster, rather than like a percentage of the damage dealt. However, we then also went on to test it on armor spots, which for Mizutsune, if you guys have fought it before, you will typically know the front claws are notoriously difficult, assuming they're still the same. You need the front claws to craft the armor set, and they were always the annoying thing to try and break. Now, when you hit Mizutsune's claws, you get white damage numbers. With the great sword, the damage number goes from 17 to 29, which is roughly a bonus 70% damage increase. Our second testing on Mizutsune's claws was with the light bow gun, showing the damage number go from 3 to 9, which is a 200% bonus to damage. So all in all, this shows a huge damage increase to the armored areas, and of course, very slightly between weapons, whilst also giving you a small damage increase to regular weak points of the monsters. So this is, in our opinion, definitely a very strong blight. You can, to a degree, kind of liken it to just applying a weak spot in like Iceborne, right? You know, you clutch four into the monster, leave a weak point, do some more damage, that kind of thing. But this, of course, is definitely much more focused on hitting those like harder areas. So I'd imagine like on monsters later on, say, if you need to break the horn or you need to break like, I don't know, a, a hard part on the monster, that's really where you're going to want to be using these because that is going to give you a noticeable damage increase. So that is pretty sweet. I definitely really like that. And I definitely like the, uh, you know, the idea that it kind of sends you around the map. It kind of gives you much more incentive to go chasing these blights. Moving on from there, we then have Thunder Blight, which is incredibly awesome. The in-game description for this one says, a monster afflicted with Thunder Blight can also be stunned with non-blunt weapons. A strike to the head is most effective, but hitting other parts of their body will still accumulate and trigger the stun with a final blow to their head. Exploiting this state is advised. We've tested this Blight with both the Light Bowgun and the Great Sword on Rathian. From our testing, we found that it was relatively easy to get a free KO on both great sword and light bow gun while the blight is in effect. This of course is assuming that you can get a hit on the head as the final KO because keep in mind while you can use this blight to attack any part of the body to stack up or rack up 
the KO threshold, in order to actually get the KO hit, you do still need to be hitting the hit. So with the light bow gun, we found that pierce ammo, we could easily reach a first KO and almost reach a second KO before the blight ends, requiring only a couple of sticky shots to trigger the second KO. This is a huge bonus to have because it effectively allows any weapon to cause at least one KO with obviously good head hits and potentially even two. And we found that this bonus scaled pretty well going from solo to duo hunts and is definitely again another powerful blight so uh you know i could see that being used on like some of the fast hitting weapons like a dual blade demon dance on the head with this could be pretty nuts next up moving on from there we have ice blight the in-game description for this one says a monster will become sluggish when afflicted with ice blight their slow movement will make it easier for the hunter to react and helps in dealing with enraged quick moving monsters but take care when inducing the ice blight as it does not affect already exhausted targets this blight is Somewhat more interesting than the wording, it slows the monster down as long as they aren't already exhausted, as described. However, the slow seems to actually cause a delay between the monster attacks rather than actually slowing down the monster attack animation speed. And you can see this from the Rathian Tailspin comparison because they are pretty much the same timing even though one is Ice Blighted. So this Blight is more so useful to give you some time to get the damage in between monsters using their attacks. Sometimes they are pretty like angry and pretty sort of uh, rapid moving around. They'll chain attacks together and not kind of give you too many windows. So this is definitely a way to effectively slow down that pace and kind of give you some of those openings. So it's definitely an interesting Blight. However, it kind of seems more useful maybe towards the beginning of a hunt before the monster naturally becomes exhausted and will help you get in some damage maybe early on in the battle. And then finally, we have Fire Blight. The description for this one says a monster afflicted with Fire Blight will temporarily suffer from damage over time. Additionally, it is more likely to flinch, which is an opportunity for hunters to target the monster's various parts. And from our testing, the tick damage is nice to have. However, the bonus to flinching doesn't seem to be too great, at least from what we've seen in the demo. We didn't see frequent or reliable flinches during the Blight's duration for both solo and duo hunts. The initial projectile damage hits for around 15 to 30 damage and ticks 10 times, once every 1 to 2 seconds, with 15 damage each across different monsters, the tick damage is still 15, for a total of 150 damage plus the initial hit. So it's, you know, it's a decent kind of thing to have there passively, but it might not be as immediately noticeable. We do know, of course, from Monster Hunter history, some monsters flinch much easier than others, so if you do happen to kind of have a particularly good setup and you then pair it with this, no doubt you will get more frequent flinches, it just doesn't necessarily showcase as noticeably as the others. But either way, it's fair to say this new edition of the Monster Blights, given a chance to, uh, you know, give them a taste of their own medicine, is incredibly cool. Loving this edition, and um, honestly, I can't wait to see what else there is. We saw from the more recent trailer that, you know, some of the other maps seem to have their own endemic life, so it may well be there are more Blights, more things to discover. So uh, as and when we get to find those out and test it out, I can't wait to see. But for the time being, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to keep it locked on the channel. Don't forget we've got plenty more Rise coverage. And if you guys haven't caught the playlist, link down below. There's also some more videos from Paradise Central and 269's channel. So you can click on the playlist to check out all of our Rise demo coverage. Thanks for so watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.